Hello everyone! In this video I'm going to do a little show and tell about serial data flow control, both the software and the hardware kind, and what exactly these pins on USB to serial adapters do, what that is, and why you might care. Here we have the setup we used in my last video where we taught my little 6502 single board computer to scroll when it hits the end of the screen and that worked great. But we still got issues that sometimes we receive more data than we can handle before getting even more data we can't handle. That means we miss characters, get framing errors, and end up with junk on the screen. Not exactly what we want. I was going to try and fix it in assembly code sometime in the future, but I'm so happy Greg and Andrew came up with two other suggestions in the comments, because that means we can take a little side quest. Besides the Raspberry Pi, the 65 Arduino, and the USB to serial adapter, I also hooked up a logic analyzer so we can see what's going on with the serial signals under the hood. What Andrew suggested should work without any modification to our hardware, so let's try that first. X off and X on, transmit off and transmit on, invoked with Control S and Control Q as he mentions, are software flow control commands meant to pause and restart the flow. If we look at our trusty ASCII chart from earlier, we'll notice that corresponds to characters device control 3 and device control 1. The use for pausing flow isn't part of the standard, but turned out to become a de facto standard after it was used in a teletype in 1963. Right now we have the serial adapter hooked up straight to the Raspberry Pi, so if I connect it to the serial adapter using the screen command, power on the Pi and start the logic capture, we should start to see something. And here's the boot progress from the Pi, and if I press Ctrl S, to send the X off code, the data stream stops, and if I press Ctrl Q to send the X on code, it continues where we left off. But if we look at the capture from the logic analyzer, we might get two surprises. First of all, we got cheated. We saw the data stream on the screen stop, but when we look at the data capture, we can see it's a continuous stream without any breaks. Second, the serial transmit line is curiously silent. What's going on is the terminal thinks it knows what we want and pauses the data stream locally but keeps receiving data in the background, which isn't what we intended. It's simply helping us too much. If I type in some random characters, they'll show up just fine, but Ctrl S and Ctrl Q are held back by the system. If you ever need to pause output on a terminal or a booting Linux machine, you probably want to make a note of these key combinations. It's a handy trick even if it doesn't help us here. I could try to make screen and the USB to serial adapter send the characters correctly with some magic STTY incantation. I'm sure there is some combination that'll let us do it, but I've actually already programmed the 65 Oino to send the X off when the buffer is full and X on after emptying it, so why don't we hook that up and see what happens if we successfully send X off and X on to the Pi. And the answer is... App Absolutely nothing happens. The 65 Oino is happily wasting time sending the X off and X on commands, but the Linux kernel just doesn't care at all. It just keeps overwhelming the poor 6502 CPU with data no matter how much it begs to catch a break. That's life, even for a 6502. What else can we do to give it some relief? Greg suggested RTS CTS flow control to begin with, so let's see what that's about. I'm sure a lot of people come across these USB to serial dongles in a lot of different places. They provide a way for computers that don't have an old school RS-232 DB9 connector on the back to talk to serial devices and specifically UARTs. That way it's easy to connect a modern computer to a GPS module, an Arduino on a breadboard or a myriad of other things. And of course you've already seen in this video we can use it to log into a Raspberry Pi and we can even send new code to the 65 Oino. The dongles are cheap and do what they're supposed to, and most reasonable operating systems have the drivers built in. The bare minimum for two-way communication is what we've got hooked up here. One RX line to receive data, one TX to transmit, and one shared ground so we're measuring voltage from the same reference. I'm not going to go over how the serial protocol works in this video because I already did that when we wrote the serial bootloader for the 65 Uino. You might want to check that out if you haven't already. It also has a VCC pin that we don't need or want if our device is already powered, and a jumper that selects if the pin gets 5 volts from USB or 3.3 volts from an internal regulator inside the chip. You might want to make a note that that'll only supply about 50 milliamps. Now here comes the question of this video. Why does it have another two pins? We can try taking a look at the datasheet for the chip. 
DTR means data terminal ready, it's an active low output, and is usually set when the serial connection is opened on the data terminal. My desktop computer in this case. I think some programming schemes use this pin to assert the reset pin before programming, but as an output it's not very useful for our 65 Arduino to say it's being overwhelmed. The last broken out pin on the row is part of the puzzle though. Greg mentioned RTS CTS flow control and here we have the CTS pin. CTS is one half of the RTS CTS flow control pair and the RTS pin is sent a bit off to the side. I'll explain why in a second. According to the datasheet, CTS is an active low input indicated with the number sign, meaning clear to send, indicating to the CTS recipient of the signal that it's okay to send more data. RTS is the other half of the pair, an active low output meant to signal request to send. In other words, I would like to accept more data from you. If you have two slow devices, you can hook up RTS to CTS on both devices, but in our case it's really unusual for a device to overwhelm a modern computer, which explains why the RTS line is a bit off to the side. The serial adapter only needs the CTS pin to know if whatever it's connected to needs it to chill. And that brings us back to the Raspberry Pi and the 65 Vuino. We know we can tell the CTS pin of the serial adapter to pause using a pin on the 65 Vuino, but how do we tell the Raspberry Pi? If we take a look at the official pinout of the Raspberry Pi 40 pin header, we see there's a serial TX pin and an RX pin, but no sign of a CTS pin we can talk to. I know we can sometimes set the Pi's pins to alternate functions, but where do we actually find those? The GPIO documentation mentions the datasheet, so let's see if we can find that for the Broadcom 2835 on the Raspberry Pi 0W. Okay, just 205 pages, let's see if we can find anything about CTS. It looks like there is some sort of support for CTS, but where do we hook it up? Ah, here it is on page 102. The CTS pin is alternate function 3 of GPIO 16. And from before, we know that GPIO 16 is on pin 36. To get that working, we can either use the modern GPIO setting in config.txt or use an overlay file. I found an overlay as part of the Atari SIO project, so I used that and just copied the files to the overlays folder on the SD card. I'll put a link to the files in the description. Since I already have them copied over, I just need to activate the overlay in config.txt, and since we have this serial adapter hooked up to the Pi, we can just log in and edit the file using Nano. Even if it is a bit funny to use a text editor at 4800 baud. First, I add an overlay to disable Bluetooth, since that moves the main UART over to the GPIO header, and secondly, I add the UART CTS RTS overlay we downloaded. That should set pin 36 as the serial CTS pin during boot. Supposedly, we also need to tell the kernel to use RTS and CTS in the arguments in commandline.txt. According to the kernel documentation, we should specify the serial port, the baud rate, N for no parity, 8 for 8 bits, and R for RTS-CTS handshaking. Another detail is the serial terminal also needs to be configured to use it, so I use the STTY command with the CRTS-CTS argument to enable it. The funny thing about Linux is that serial settings persist across reboots, which comes in handy for us here, but on Unix variants like macOS, the serial settings are reset when the connection is closed. All that's left is to tell the Pi to reboot and see if the CTS pin does anything. I already have pin 36 hooked up and I have a wire pulled high through a resistor we can use to toggle CTS. It looks like the boot started there and the CTS pin is pulled low by the Pi. And if I connect it high, the data flow should pause. But that doesn't happen. Hmm. My best guess is the handshaking just isn't compiled into the kernel and that's a can of worms I'm not going to open for this video. If you're a Linux kernel expert, I'd love to hear what you think. But it does look like the CTS actually works when control is passed over to systemd. So at least that's something. Even if we're going to see some junk when the kernel is in charge, we should get perfect output afterwards. Let's write a tiny bit of code to toggle the CTS pin at the right time. We need another pin, so let's just grab the third pin next to the serial pins, bit 2 of DRA. 
We set that low initially and make sure it's configured as an output. I did try this off camera configured as open collector by just flipping the direction bit in DDRA, but that didn't seem to work, so let's just do it the normal push pull way. We'll leave in the X off and X on commands, but we could remove them to gain a little bit of speed. But let's make sure we set the CTS pin before sending the software flow control commands, or we might lose a character. You might have caught me already and noticed that I misnamed the pin we're toggling. Since from the 65 Oino side, it's not a CTS pin, but of course an RTS pin. Oh well, as long as it works. Let's burn that little code change to ROM, restart the Pi and see if it actually does work. So to recap, we tell the Raspberry Pi to pause sending data by pulling its CTS line low and when we're ready to receive more data, we set it high again. If we connected the 65 Arduino to the serial adapter instead of the Pi, we could also use the CTS pin to pause data. That way we could send a photo that's bigger than RAM and still display it on screen, for instance. Right now, we see the kernel messages outputting and ignoring the CTS signal as expected, resulting in a bunch of framing errors, but in just a moment, we should see welcome to Raspbian Bullseye, and after that, we should have perfect output without framing errors. And there it is, no more framing errors. But what are those other weird characters near the OK messages that look like junk? Well, you might notice a malformed character followed by a bracket and some numbers, and those are actually intentional by the Pi. They're supposed to be invisible ANSI escape codes directing the terminal to take certain actions, like changing the color of some characters, clearing the screen, and so on. Since we haven't written any code on the 65 Arduino to handle those characters to make it more VT100 compatible or something like that, and we haven't even prevented outputting unprintable characters, the escape code 1B hex comes out as a character that kind of looks like a mix of an exclamation mark and a parenthesis. But besides that, it looks like we have perfect serial reception without any breaks. So even if the Linux kernel is being a bit uncooperative, we could hook up a keyboard to the 65 Arduino and use it to control the Pi via serial. I might at least try to fix it so we silence the escape codes at some point, but I think it's more fun to write games or poke around some other ICs. So, who knows? By now, you should have an idea what serial flow control is in hardware and software, and what exactly you can use it for. I have some big news coming up in what'll probably be my next video, so be sure you don't miss that one when it comes out. Right now, it's still a bit of a secret what it is, but come hang out on Discord and you might catch a hint. Either way, thanks for watching.